Hello again and welcome to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Paul and I'm the Professor of Film. I love everything to do with uh, film photography, analogue photography. I enjoy cameras, I enjoy film, I enjoy de developing and printing. I've been doing it for many, many years since I was a lad, so that is a long time as you can see because I'm quite an old duffer now. And I'm sure that uh, there's lots of bits and pieces that I'll be able to pass on to you information wise. If you have a look at my channel you'll see there's lots of videos there with lots of help and advice for using cameras and using film cameras particularly and um, and I hope that you get a lot from it if you enjoy my channel then please do subscribe hit the uh, bell button so that you know that um, any new videos come along um, you'll be able to be told about them and if you enjoy the video do hit the like button and obviously uh, at the end of the video there'll be uh, pictures that I take with the camera so you'll be able to see what goes on but for the time being uh, 2023 it was decided that I'm going to be buying cameras because I can't stand the idea of lovely film cameras sitting in the bottom of somebody's drawer or sitting in somebody's attic gathering dust and collecting fungus in the lens which basically is going to destroy the lens so I'm out and about finding as many cameras as I can reinstating them giving them new life and then passing them on so that people can get the very best from them and, uh, and bring them back to use. Cameras that lived a life. I'm not a person who buys beautiful uh, collector's items and all the rest of it. I buy cameras that have had a life and a workhorse. I bought a box of three cameras. It was suggested somebody asked if I could do a box opening. But to be perfectly honest with you, did you want to see me sitting here for 20 minutes putting lots of bubble wrap off of cameras? I think it's more fun if uh, we go through and have a look. Now, I bought three cameras. So this is the first one. All we're doing in this video is checking out if the cameras work. And in the next video, uh, probably what I'll do is I'll do a video of each camera. It's what it does, what it doesn't do and how good it is. Now this is a Minster 3, Yashica Minster 3. Oh, I can get it out of the case. It's, uh, it's got a light meter built in. That's a CDS light meter. And it's a rangefinder camera. So I know that I've had a quick look at it. I know that the light meter is working because the needle moves when I put my hand over it, plain and simple. So what? We, oh, crash. Perhaps it doesn't work now. <laughs> right, what have we got? Right, so it's a fixed lens camera. On here, you've got what we've got here. We've got the shutter speed on this one 500 to B. Oh, I see. And these are the f-stops. F2. Oh, I'll go, you read them in there. F28 to 22. Right, that's the f-stops in that little window there. These are the, um, the light meter that you would read on here. So if this said 13, then you would set that to 13. Or well, yeah, between 12 and 10. But of course, it can only do that depending on what shutter speed you set. That's quite clever. They work together. So you can't overexpose. And that is how you focus. So with a, a rangefinder camera, you have you look through the viewfinder and you have the main picture, obviously what you're looking at. And then in the center, there's a little round circle. It's usually green or yellow. And you can sort of see a vague image um, of what you're looking at in a small area and then when you turn the viewfinder the two images come together the, the yellow or green image comes together over what you're actually looking at and then you know that it's in focus and that's how a rangefinder works so you've got you're looking through the viewfinder there and then the rangefinder part is this bit here <coughs> and that's usually a inside here there's usually a mirror um, connected to the uh, when you turn the focus <coughs> and as the mirror moves Obviously, it's all worked out in the factory when it's created, but then the mirror moves in there and then you know that you've got the focus. So that's quite clever. We know it works. So if we set the, bleh, set the shutter speed to the top one we can, let's see what we've got. Yeah, right, let's open it up. See what's inside. Oh. With cameras that you buy on auctions or wherever, always make sure that there's no film in it before you open it. 
Oh, no, that doesn't do it. Energy connection. How did I do it just then, then? Ah, you have to push it in. <sighs> Who knew? <laughs> okay. So. Oh, the shutter's not there. The shutter doesn't seem to work. Oh no, the shutter's there. Okay, the shutter is working. Let's take the shutter down to B. Right. This obviously proves this camera needs quite a lot of work doing to it. So we'll move on from that one. The next one oh, is a Practica MTL3. And I think this needs some work as well. So this is a Practica MTL3 with a Pentagon 50mm lens, 1.8, and it runs from 1.8 to f16. So, again, Bokka Heaven. Shutter speed, DIN setting. So, it says DIN setting, ASA setting, so that's set on 200. You pull that up and turn it, 100, 200. There's your F stops, F to F16, and that's where you focus, and that is your depth of field scale there. There's the shutter. Oh, what's that? Oh, and that's your depth of field viewer. When you pull that back, the, the blades go to where they belong. But can you see? see what's wrong with this the blades are sticky when i open it up and then take a picture let's rewind it on you'll see what the matter is the blades are stuck they're not returning but that's okay if you turn it to obviously they should stay open let's have a look Let's check this out. Okay, that's on because it's on. Okay, that's all working okay. The problem is the blades. Turn it down to F16, yeah. So that's the job that's got to be done, which is a shame. So that's two cameras, both got problems. <clears throat> now, last but not least, of the three cameras that I purchased, just to say they can be repaired. That's not an issue. I will repair them. And here we've got the Practica PL Nova One. And this has got the lens that actually came with the camera when it was new. It's unusual. Yeah. Oh. This is a cart horse. It weighs a ton. So what have we got? We've got your shutter speeds there. There's no light meter on this baby. <clears throat> I mean, if you don't know, these two buttons here, F and X, are for when you fit a flat. If you you haven't got a flash, but you can buy one that would go over the top of it to put a cold shoe, shoe flash on, and then the cable would come out of that, the PC cable, and go to F if it was bulbs, or X if it was an electronic flash or electric flash. So what have we got? We've got F28, which isn't that fast, up to F22. As I always say, uh, the... Winkle on the ant to the mountains in the distance will all be on focus at F22. 
because that's your uh, you can see it there your depth of field scale so shutter speeds f stops focus wind on no batteries let's we'll make sure there's no film in it no there's no film in it oh hang on no, it's at this end there we go it opens backwards so this one the blind runs that way so modern cameras the blinds go up and down much older cameras the blinds go side to side it seems to be working okay this one out of the three seems to be working So I'll tell you what we'll do then. I'll put a film in this one and uh, and we'll run through with the film and I'll show you the pictures at the end. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're enjoying this. And a thumbs up always helps. So, oh, you set the, uh, you set the ASA, but you don't need to set the ASA for a light meter or anything. You're only setting the ASA to remind you. <clears throat> And that's telling you how many shots there are left. Oh, this has got a, a flash speed. So I don't know whether you're aware, but with all cut shutter, with all cameras that have got a shutter or a blind, blind shutter, you have to have a synchronized speed for the flash. The reason is, if you don't know, that if you talk about a vertical blind, if you just had a, a diaphragm, which is like a shutter and people think that it goes open and then closes open and closes but if you did that the light in the middle would get more light than the outside because it works like that so if you have a shutter the shutter would open like that the shutter would open and then after the period of time the top shutter would come down so the whole image gets the same amount of light for the same time however if it was one hundred two hundredth of a second, one two hundred and fiftieth of a second, that shutter's going to come down, and that one's going to follow it straight away. So how the shutter's going to work is going to be like that. So the whole picture isn't seen at once, but it's done like a strip down, and so every bit every bit of the uh, negative image gets uh, gets the same amount of light. So I'm going to put some film in this one, and we'll test this camera out. This seems to be all right. Just have a the quality of the lens is actually again it's quite clean there's no no serious fungus or anything in there some dust obviously it is old and the other question of course is is there any dirt in the viewfinder let's have a look no the viewfinder is as clear as a bell so out of the three cameras this one is a goer Filming, you can see the pictures at the end. The Practica MTL3, that needs some serious work, but we will repair it because I think all cameras should uh, be being used. The Minster 3, I don't know. Those shutters look pretty oiled up, but we can only do our best. So hopefully we'll be able to do something about it. And until next time, thank you for watching, and I'll see you again on my next video. Bye-bye.